Thanks for watching the Council in Brief. I'm Susan Kennedy. We're here to wrap up the news of the Montgomery County Council for this fourth week in November. We start this time with a report from the Council's Office of Legislative Oversight that details how rising costs of the county's commitments have created a structural budget challenge that needs to be addressed. The report was commissioned by Council President Nancy Florine. The review includes the budgets of the county government, the schools, Montgomery College, and the Park and Planning Commission. We have now isolated out some facts that oftentimes people have disagreed about. And uh, that will allow, really creates the background for the ongoing union negotiations and will p provide the background, I think, to this council, the next council's deliberations in the budget in the, in the coming year. Something's going to have to give. And the question is what? Are we going to look at different ways of funding health care, different ways of looking at employee uh, compensation, uh, uh, really pension plans? And that's, an, of course, not just us. It's a national, it's a statewide issue, that's for sure. Teacher pension is a big issue on the table at the state level, and it's a national problem. So I think we've done uh, a good job of laying out the issues. Of course, the solution's always harder to find. In other news, more work on the future of White Flint and the big question of how to pay for the development and the infrastructure to support it. It now appears a special taxing district will be the new financing vehicle for White Flint. The special tax, which many existing properties will be exempt from, is expected to generate more than $200 million that will help pay for White Flint's renovation. Projects that are part of the plan include an overhaul of major roads including Rockville Pike, a second entrance to the metro station, and construction of an elementary school, fire station, and a civic green. The council will also, or the county will also, forward fund um, for three or, or four, four specific projects and will also provide a fund kind of in reserve that in the event that funds don't, that development district funds don't come in as quickly as we'd like or that there are projects that we've identified, that there's a mechanism that can address that short-term gap in the very near term as, this pro as the projects are starting up. Council members say there are plenty of areas in the White Flint sector that can be ready for redevelopment quickly and that now is the time to move. The challenge, they say, is making sure that fees are fairly applied to property owners. Council President Nancy Florine says the project is solid and the county executive's proposal is good to go. We are really committing uh, to a, a really well-organized program to, develop, to deliver infrastructure to the community. And, and that's the point that I, I cannot overemphasize. The council is expected to take final action on the White Flint financing plan next week. Council Vice President Valerie Irvin has introduced a bill that would require an arbitrator who would be responsible for looking at the county's ability to afford labor contracts before evaluating other factors normally used in arbitration decisions. As she tells us, the proposed bill would require an arbitrator to give the highest priority to the county's ability to pay. And we'd have thought that that was an extraordinarily important um, thing to do in light of this era of shrinking budgets. And we know that there's no money. And so while the unions are negotiating with the county executive, we think this, we, this gives the unions more opportunity to bargain in good faith at the table instead of going to impasse, which then creates a situation where we have to get an arbitrator to decide. A bill that relaxes noise restrictions during specific hours and seasons is under discussion in the Council's Transportation and Environment Committee. It would exempt noise levels at outdoor venues at places like Strathmore Hall and requires potential home buyers and homeowners near those areas to be notified about the potential noise from the activities at those areas. The commercial property at the bottom of the hill sold to a residential developer and they're building all these houses that come up what everybody used to think was the lawn around Strathmore and they would be so close to where the movies and the concerts are that we'd violate the noise ordinance. And a lot of us feel that you know this is a part of Montgomery County, it's something that residents all over the county enjoy. Um, if the developer wants to build here, they can build here, but we're not going to shut down the concerts and the movies. Well, that does it for this edition of the Council in Brief. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching.